Slugs in Love by Susan Pearson and Kevin O'Malley. Mary Lou loved everything about Herbie. How his slime trail glistened in the dark. How he could stretch himself thin to squeeze inside the cellar window. How he always found the juiciest tomato. Though she never spoke a single word to him, she was too shy. She thought about Herbie every morning and every night, and most of the hours in between. On Monday, while she grazed in the strawberry patch, Herbie filled her mind, and a love poem filled her heart. She wrote it in slime on the watering can. Strawberries are red, blueberries are blue. Herbie is handsome. Love, Mary Lou. The next morning, Herbie found it. He looked around. There were already at least 60 slugs in the garden. Which one, he wondered, was Mary Lou? Herbie decided to send a message back. He wrote it on the garden hoe. Mary Lou, which one are you? Meet me here at half past two. Yours truly, Herbie. But the gardener put the hoe away in the barn, so Mary Lou never saw Herbie's message. On Tuesday, while Mary Lou was hiding from the sun in the ivy, she saw Herbie hiding under a stone, and a poem immediately came to mind. She wrote it on the wheelbarrow later that day. The sun is shining all around, it shines on field and tree, but Herbie safe beneath a rock. I wish he'd think of me. Love, Mary Lou. Mary Lou loves Herbie, teased Jethro on Wednesday morning. Herbie blushed. Who is Mary Lou, he asked, but Jethro didn't know either. Herbie sent another message. This time he wrote it on a fence where it would stay put. To Mary Lou, you could make my life complete. I'd love to meet someone so sweet. Tell me where and I'll be there. Sincerely, Herbie. But that afternoon it rained and his letter washed away. Even when Mary Lou was sleeping, poems to Herbie filled her dreams. She woke early and wrote another poem on the scarecrow. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Herbie, Herbie, handsome slug, Mary Lou would love a hug. Love, Mary Lou. That Mary Lou is some poet, said Sammy. Do you know her? Herbie asked excitedly. I think she's the brownish one, said Sammy. All day long, Herbie searched for a brownish slug, but next to the brown dirt, they all looked a little brown. Herbie left another message on the watermelons. Your poems make me happy. Your poems make me glad. But I can't find you, Mary Lou. And that makes me feel sad. Your friend, Herbie. But Mary Lou was in the squash patch that day and didn't see Herbie's note. She left another poem behind on the zucchini. Herbie, you would make me as happy as can be if you'd just pay attention and please, please notice me. Love, Mary Lou. Herbie was at his wit's end. He had been noticing her. Well, her poems anyway. And he'd ask everyone he could think of if they knew her. I think she's the greenish one, said Homer. I think she's the pinkish one, said Jodell. Maybe she's the one who likes tomatoes, said Adelaide. All slugs like tomatoes, said Herbie. 
but Adelaide had given him an idea. Herbie climbed to the top of the tallest tomato plant. On his way back down, he wrote a message. Look at me, I've climbed so high that I can see the world pass by. Mice and ants, an old black shoe, but Mary Lou, where are you? I've left you poems near and far. Won't you tell me where you are? Love, Herbie. And that night, when Mary Lou went out to snack on a tomato, she found Herbie's message glistening in the garden. What joy, what gladness, what delight! Mary Lou could hardly contain herself as she hurried to the barn. The next morning, the first thing Herbie saw was, Your rhyme is sublime. Herbie, dear, I am here. As always, when she saw Herbie, poetry filled Mary Lou's head. She said, Herbie, I am Mary Lou. We meet at last. How do you do? Herbie was tongue-tied. Suddenly he felt shy, but at last he blurted out, I am fine. Will you be mine? Mary Lou and Herbie lived happily ever after. The End <laughs>